At the New York Auto Show, Ram provided specifications for their Ram 1500 Rev. That's their all-electric pickup coming in late 2024. They also confirmed the existence of a Ram 1500 Rev XR. XR in this case stands for extended range, but that's about all we know about it. More information will come later, but given past comments that they've made about the potential existence of that truck and what we know of plug-in hybrid technology in general, I've put together four design options that it could be. The first one I hate, and I'll tell you why. The second one is very creative, but will probably never happen. The third one is the most conventional, but has some problems fundamentally. And the last one, I'm saving the best for last. So we'll get into each of those designs right after the intro. Prior to the New York Auto Show, various Ram and Stellantis executives were cornered into admitting that a combustion engine range extender was in the works as an option for their battery electric truck. They did a good job of dodging the questions using the five D's of public relations. Dodge, duck, dip, dive, and dodge. Now at least we know that a Ram 1500 Rev XR is coming, but what is it? From their comments, XR will use an internal combustion engine to recharge the battery electric Ram Rev. Carlos Tavares, the CEO of Stellantis, said so. That makes the Ram 1500 Rev XR a plug-in hybrid electric vehicle. It is a plug-in hybrid because it has two power sources, electricity that comes into the vehicle via a plug and fuel that comes in through a fuel cap. Let's take a look at the two basic types of plug-in hybrid electric vehicles. And for this, I get to reuse a cheesy graphic I made for my video on plug-in hybrid electric vehicles or PHEVs. Check out the link above if you're interested. PHEVs come in two basic types, parallel or series. A parallel PHEV is by far the most common. Essentially, it starts off with a regular internal combustion engine vehicle and electrifies it adding an electric motor, a relatively small battery, and some other modules. The electric motor needs to be powerful enough to move the vehicle by itself. There are lots of vehicles that do this. Hyundai makes a few. Their Santa Fe can drive on electricity for about 31 miles. The BMW 330e can drive 22 miles on electricity. Range for these types of vehicles are usually between 15 and 30 miles based on how large a battery they want to put into it. A series plug-in hybrid essentially starts with a battery electric vehicle and adds a combustion engine as a generator. It's not a portable generator like you see in the graphic, although some people have tried to do this, but the concept is the same. In a series configuration, the combustion engine has no physical connection to the wheels. It's there only to recharge the battery. It's a range extender. There are basically two vehicles that do this, the Chevrolet Volt with a V and the BMW i3 with the Rex option. The standard model was a battery electric vehicle using electricity only, and the Rex range extender was an option that you could add to it. It came both ways. Design options two, three, and four that I talk about later will all be series plug-in hybrid designs. But option one is a parallel plug-in hybrid design. Now I know you're saying, no, 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 that's not what they said. They said extended range, not range extender. They also use this term range electric paradigm breaker. I, I don't know what that means, but it's not impossible that, and, and this does bother me, but could the Ram Rev XR just be a system much like what you find in the 4xe systems in the wrangler and the grand cherokee or in the pacifica hybrid which again by name it's actually a plug-in hybrid but they only call it a hybrid maybe they've been inconsistent with some of the naming let's look at why that could be the design for the ram rev xr in the jeep wrangler and grand cherokee the parallel plug-in hybrid electric vehicle system is called 4xe and I like the name, it's cool. Last fall, Jeep had their online 4xE day event. 
They revealed some new products, including the Jeep Recon, which is as close to an all-electric Jeep Wrangler as they were willing to go. But look, look at the Recon. On the back and on the hood, it has the 4xE badge. They've decided that any Jeep with a plug can wear the 4xE badge, whether it's a PHEV or a full battery electric vehicle. I don't get it. It is confusing. It took a diagram for me to explain the difference between a parallel plug-in hybrid and a series plug-in hybrid. And the IRS treats all those vehicles as clean vehicles. And some people will just say, oh, they qualify as an electric vehicle tax credit. So we're not making it easy for people to understand this. What would a parallel PHEV look like for Ram? For this, they could try to use the current system in the Jeeps. That's based on a two liter turbo four cylinder or they could borrow the system from the Pacifica Hybrid, which is actually a plug-in hybrid. Again, marketing department just trying to simplify things for their customers, and I think it's misleading. Both these systems work just fine in their current vehicles, but put them in the larger, heavier Grand Wagoneer or in a Ram 1500, and I think it's gonna be woefully underpowered. So let's do the obvious. Take the all new Hurricane engine. That's a twin turbo inline six. We'll use the base motor, not the high output version, and add two electric motors and a 20 kilowatt hour battery pack. That's a little bit bigger pack than that goes in the Wrangler or the Grand Cherokee 4xE. My rough estimate, the electric motor adds 100 horsepower and 175 pound feet of torque. The battery probably is gonna get 28 miles of all electric range. City fuel economy goes up a mile per gallon at the same time. Even with the slightly smaller tank, 500 miles of range would be easy. Plus you get 28 miles of all electric range on top of that. Can it deliver zero tailpipe emissions? Yes, for 28 miles if you don't stomp on the pedal too hard. A system like this is definitely going into the Jeep Grand Wagoneer. They've already told us they're going to offer a 4xE system in that vehicle. And oh, by the way, the Wagoneer Grand Wagoneer is based on the Ram 1500 platform. So it should be an easy plug and play to offer it in the pickup truck as well. You know, the more I think about it, I, I think design option number one is exactly where, what we're going to get with the Ram 1500 Rev XR. It's like right under our noses. And to be fair, if you plug in frequently every night, you're gonna burn less gas. That's a good thing. You're gonna save money. You're gonna put out less CO2. You're starting that transition. But just the way they approach this from a rollout standpoint, there are a lot of people online, not just me, who are convinced that this is gonna be something different. This is going to be a range extender, a series plug-in hybrid, and that's what we'll talk about now. So designs two, three, and four are series plug-in hybrids where the gasoline engine is there only to act as a generator to charge the batteries. For design option number two, we're going to take the 2024 Ram 1500 Rev all electric truck and find a place to package a smallest generator or several. Does that sound stupid? Well, Ford actually put a patent out on this. They looked at putting a generator in the back of the bed, packaged in a toolbox shaped module, allowing the owner to swap it in and out as needed. Imagine you have to go on a long road trip coming up. You call your dealer and ask to rent the range extender module for the week. It plugs into the back of your bed and there you go. I've also seen some online videos speculating that the generators could be packaged in the RAM boxes on the side of the bed. Or how about in the front trunk? You could put it there too. All these sound great until you look at some rough numbers. And when I mean rough, I mean rough. Each of these Honda generators puts out about 7,000 watts. My Mark I eyeball indicates that exactly two of these could be shoved into the trunk. That's more energy put into the batteries, but you're still not keeping up with the energy usage at highway speeds. You're delaying the inevitable, but not coming close to keeping up. If you want to extend the range of an electric vehicle, design option number two just doesn't make any practical sense. There's not enough power coming out of those generators to have a meaningful impact on the range of the vehicle. But now let's look at design options number three and four, 
where we put a bigger engine in it to generate more electricity and charge those batteries. You need more power? Design option number three is based on the Ram 1500 Rev, which rides on Stella Frame electric vehicle platform. We're gonna put an automotive gasoline engine in the frunk. About how big an engine do we need? If we look back at the BMW i3, it used essentially a motorcycle engine, a 647cc or 0.65 liter two-cylinder engine. The vehicle had a curb weight of about 3,000 pounds, so I'm gonna say we need at least three times more engine and probably four to five times more given that this is a pickup and we might actually want to haul or tow something. That points us to either the two liter turbo four cylinder or the venerable Pentastar 3.6 liter V6. Pick either one. But is there enough room for it? The frunk has 15 cubic feet of space, but there's stuff underneath that compartment. There's a 250 kilowatt electric drive module. There's an electrical HVAC unit, a heat pump, or some other unit. When designing Stella Frame, the electrical skateboard, did they plan for an internal combustion engine to be carried on the front of that platform? Also, unless you have the exhaust pipes coming out the sides of the truck, which would be amazing if they did that, you would have to worry about the engine exhaust passing by the large EV battery and heating them up. You need to package the fuel tank and the cooling system. Uh, oh yeah, and I guess you have to cut holes in that smooth aerodynamic front end of the rev to allow for engine cooling. Simply put, if you wanna put an automotive engine in the front of the all-electric Ram 1500 Rev, you've gotta make a lot of changes. It would be like taking several steps backwards for that Stella Frame electric truck platform, almost taking it back to its origins as a combustion engine truck, which leads us to design option number four. Design option number four I really like, but that's not to say it will happen. Start with the current Ram 1500 DT platform. Use the Pentastar V6, which is the current base engine for that truck. Remove the transmission and drive shaft. You don't need them. The lithium ion battery pack will not be the same pack as used in the 2024 Ram Rev. That pack was designed to fit into the Stella frame skateboard. We'll have to develop a new enclosure to fit the batteries into the current Ram DT frame. Let's shrink it down a little bit to 125 kilowatt hours to save cost and weight. If we package the batteries lengthwise along the middle of the truck, we have some space on the sides to run the exhaust so we don't heat up the batteries. The V6 engine gets an electric generator added to recharge the battery. The rear axle, which would normally be powered by the gas engine, now becomes what's called an E-axle, where the electric motor is mounted directly to the solid rear axle. I'm gonna call up American Axle for this. They have an E-beam axle that they've demonstrated in full-size pickups. With a 250 kilowatt electric motor, that roughly translates to 327 horsepower. That's more than you get from the V6 today. We could bump that up to 300 kilowatt electric motor or roughly 400 horsepower. In the front, no electric motor. This is going to be a rear wheel drive pickup. The plastic fuel tank already packages. We're gonna reduce the size a little bit Tooling for plastic fuel tanks are relatively cheap. So now I've taken the current V6 powered gasoline rear wheel drive pickup, eliminated the transmission and drive shaft, added a generator to the engine, rerouted the exhaust, packaged a smaller EV battery along the length of the current chassis, punched a charging port in the front fender, added the necessary electronic modules to charge the battery and control the motor. At 125 kilowatt hour battery, it should have an electric range of about 200 miles, maybe more. Once it hits 20% state of charge, the V6 is going to start up and recharge the battery. With a 20 gallon tank, it should be able to keep that truck rolling for an extra five to seven hours of highway driving. Combined, we can claim over 600 miles of range with more than 160 miles of those being zero tailpipe emissions. Here's something to consider. You may have heard that California wants to ban the sale of new internal combustion engine vehicles in 2035, and other states are looking to adopt the same legislation. 
Now, there is a clause in there that allows manufacturers to continue to make plug-in hybrid electric vehicles so long as they have at least 50 miles, 5-0, of all-electric range. Design option number four achieves that goal, so it could still be sold. And design option number one could also continue to be sold if you put a bigger battery in it. If the Ram 1500 Rev XR turns out to be just a parallel plug-in hybrid, I'll be a little disappointed. I want to see something more creative than that, but maybe that's just me. Go ahead and share your thoughts in the comments below. If you like this video, go ahead and hit that button and consider subscribing because once Ram reveals more details about it, I'll be sure to post another video confirming whether I got one of them right or was totally off base. Anyway, thank you for watching.